So we're learning about uh, multiplication as repeated addition. Now multiplication is now finally being introduced as multiplication, but we're not forgetting that to multiply is to use a shortcut for addition. So multiplying is still addition. Multiplying is not a separate category of math. It's the same thing. You're taking groups of numbers that are equal and counting them by groups so it's easier to add, it's quicker to add large numbers. That's the whole point of multiplying equal groups. So when you have uh, a group of six, 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 and six, you have five groups of six. Now, instead of writing six plus six plus six plus six plus six, you write six times five. This is now the shortcut that students are going to be practicing. So when you're counting five groups of six, even though you're writing six times five, you are doing a shortcut for 6, 12, 18, 24, 30. So 6 times 5 is 30. So that's what we're going to be practicing now. We've spent a few days going over repeated addition, going over groups, and counting, uh, counting up by different numbers. Now we are focusing on the multiplication part of this uh, of this new skill. Now one thing I want to make sure that students notice is that if you have six five times you're gonna get 30 total and we can see that here as 6, 12, 18, 24, and 30. You're gonna end up with 30 if you count five groups of six. Now if you count by fives and you have one, two, three, four, five, six groups of five, and you count that up, five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, you're gonna get the same total as if you counted six, five times. It's the same as five, six times. That's something I wanna make sure the students recognize, is that multiplication, when you group numbers, you can group a number, a large number like 30, different ways. You can group them into equal parts in more than one way. So 5 times 6, yes, that is 30, because you're taking groups of 5. But you can also take 30 and put them in groups of 6. That's something I want to make sure that students recognize. So finally, when you have something, when you have a textbook or a test that's talking about seven groups of one, well, all you're doing is talking about having seven groups of one. Now, you will see the textbook writing seven times one, and that's where the language becomes difficult. The math is easy. The language becomes tricky, because if you have one seven times, you're going to get seven. If you have seven one time, you're going to get seven. The book has the first number as groups. And I'm not concerned with that. Because if, this, if your student tells me that seven, seven groups of one is seven times one, I'm gonna be okay with that. So even though the textbook is showing that seven groups of one is seven times one, which is seven, I'm okay if they write 7 times 1 or 1 times 7 because ultimately you're still grouping the same total number. So 9 groups of 2, you can tell me that that's 9 times 2. As long as you know that that's uh, 2 groups of 9, that's 18, or 9 groups of 2, which is 18, you're still grouping the same total number and I'm okay with that. Four groups of 10 can be four times 10 or 10 times four, because you're still grouping 40 in either four groups of 10 or 10 groups of four. And eventually, 
when you see a, a multiplication problem like 8 times 3, you're going to know, you're going to memorize that 8 times 3 is 24. You're going to memorize 4 times 4 is 16. And you're going to memorize 6 times 2 is 12. You're going to memorize all of the different ways you can group large numbers. So multiplication as repeated addition, that's what we're practicing now.